I'm Dr. Paul Gardner at the Skull Base Center in the University of Pittsburgh. I think the most important thing for patients who are newly diagnosed with chordoma to know is that there really are very good treatment options. Uh, they're well-defined treatment options at this point, and there really are experts who understand the disease and are looking to make treatment better every single day. Probably the most important thing for a chordoma patient to look for in their treatment team is experience. A chordoma is a very rare tumor, and many physicians are very unfamiliar with or uncomfortable with treating chordoma. There are also a lot of subtleties in the treatment of chordoma and the behavior of chordoma uh, and the timing of different aspects of treatment that uh, only can be gained with experience. Biopsy is appropriate for chordoma when it's unclear whether or not uh, the tumor is chordoma. Many times we will approach a tumor, uh, a chordoma in the skull base, with the philosophy that we'll biopsy at the time of surgery. If it is clear that the tumor is chordoma, then we would go ahead and resect at that point. However, if it's unclear, it is often wise to wait for biopsy. The skull base is treated much differently than the spine, where a lot of times a biopsy has to be considered and done in a certain fashion to ensure there's not seeding. Uh, the risk of seeding along track of a biopsy if it's done, for example, endonasally is, is lower. Getting multiple opinions uh, for the treatment of a tumor like chordoma uh, has mixed value. In some cases, it can provide confidence in treatment pathway, and in many cases, it can avoid an inappropriate treatment uh, if there is an inexperienced treating team initially. There is a potential uh, for a downside to multiple opinions, and that can be very confusing sometimes for patients. Uh, in general, with a rare tumor like chordoma, uh, multiple opinions often will lead to uh, a relatively common um, philosophy about how to treat uh, that particular person. However, uh, if it becomes confusing, sometimes it's best to rely on, on the initial trust developed with uh, whoever is the primary treatment person for that. So multiple opinions can be very useful, especially if they come uh, as part of a multidisciplinary team or from practitioners of different uh, types of treatment of chordoma, such as oncologists, radiation specialists, and surgeons. Uh, in general, uh, patients with chordoma will require more than just one type of treatment um, or will have to understand the different types of treatment. So having a multidisciplinary team involved in the initial assessment of uh, someone with chordoma can be very helpful both in understanding the, the right way to go about treating that particular tumor, but also just to help the person understand what their pathway may look like. So I became uh, involved with chordoma partly through professional, partly through uh, somewhat personal relationships. I, I'm a practitioner of skull-based surgery, and I'm one of the uh, first subspecialty trained skull-based surgeons in endoscopic endonasal surgery. I was partly responsible for development of many of these techniques, and uh, they turn out to be very well suited for, for most chordomas, not all, but for most, chordom most chordomas of the skull base. Uh, as a result, we've uh, developed a lot of experience uh, with treating this tumor. At the same time, uh, we've developed strong personal relationships with the Chordoma Foundation, which has further fed uh, this understanding and, and uh, personal desire to work with Chordoma. On top of that, with working with many patients with Chordoma, I've seen the trials that they go through. I've seen the difficulties with treating Chordoma, especially once it recurs. And that's led to a very deep desire on my part to be more heavily involved with not just the initial treatment of surgery, but uh, a better understanding of the overall disease and also how to treat it better and in a way even to try to put myself out of business. The endoscopic endonasal approach is an uh, approach that uses both nostrils to access really all of the front part of the skull base. Uh, the entire front part of the skull base, all the way from the forehead all the way down to the upper spine, actually comes right up to the sinuses that you can access through the nose. And so by opening those sinuses, it's sort of like going through a lot of caves that can give you access to all of the skull base. Uh, chordomas can grow in 
most of those areas and chordomas though also tend to grow in front of all the important structures like the nerves and the arteries. So by coming at that tumor from the front, you avoid having to move all of those structures and so it's given it an inherent advantage uh, just by uh, the direct access it gives to those tumors. The University of Pittsburgh Medical Center is the first and the oldest skull-based center in North America. Many of the traditional skull-based approaches that were used for pliable chordoma were developed there. At our medical center, uh, we also were one of the primary developers of endoscopic endonasal surgery, and we have a very large team that has experience in all of these approaches, which I think is critical for surgery uh, in the skull base. As a result of, of this experience, as well as development of newer approaches, we have taken on a lead role in the surgical treatment of clival chordoma. Our center has been very supportive of this as well, uh, and we're fortunate to have a broad range of multidisciplinary care, everything from medical oncologists to radiation oncologists, as well as the large team of surgeons. Uh, in addition, we've been able to form networks uh, both of research, where we send a tumor, for example, to the Cordoma Foundation for research. We have research within our own institution, but we also have clinical networks formed with different proton beam centers and other medical oncologists to try to get the best care possible for each patient. Prior to the Cordoma Foundation, there were no references e for either patients or physicians to understand uh, the treatment of tumor. They have grown to have a large board to help patients understand proper treatment pathways and get them access to experienced clinicians. Uh, at the same time, there's been a, an absolute explosion of scientific knowledge and research uh, on Cordoma, which is 100% a result of efforts of the Cordoma Foundation. By getting a small group of us scientists together, this has created a seed for a much larger group. Uh, it's created uh, funding, and all of this has really grown on itself in an exponential fashion. The growth in, in Cordoma understanding and therapy has been like nothing I've seen in, in my career or I've even heard about. Um, I think largely through uh, efforts of the Cordoma Foundation and Josh Summer. I think the growth in Cordoma over the next five to ten years will be uh, a better understanding of the wide range of tumors. There is a wide range of behavior of tumors and understanding when tumors require more aggressive treatment and when they require less aggressive treatment. And equally importantly in the cases where uh, tumors fail standard treatment, there will be much better options for treating those patients who, who then require treatment for recurrence and better control of their tumor. What uh, keeps me excited and makes me most excited about the field of chordoma is the fact that I see a, a constant movement forward in the understanding. I see a growth in the people who have the same excitement I have about trying to treat uh, and understand and maybe even one day cure this tumor and to have so many people involved in that goal and making successful small steps and just seeing the progress that's been made in a short period of time really is the most exciting thing to me. One, one of the things to me that uh, is most rewarding about this entire process is to, to really see the, the story behind the Cordoma Foundation, which in, in many ways is the story of Josh Summer. Uh, he was diagnosed with Cordoma and treated at our center and we've followed him ever since. Um, but to see the courage and the motivation that he's had uh, to take on this disease, um, knowing that he has to deal with uh, the understanding of the disease, the more he understands the disease, probably the scarier it is sometimes, I would imagine. But uh, that courage and that seed is really what created the Cordoma Foundation. And to me, it's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Um, I think Josh is inspirational in that way uh, and I think in many ways it's inspiration to both physicians as well as patients dealing with Cordoma.